In this video, I'll show you how to prepare an unmanaged Power Linux server to install Linux using a graphics card and monitor. An unmanaged server does not use system management interfaces like HMC or IVM. You'll need a graphics monitor, a USB keyboard, a USB mouse, power cables, an Ethernet cable, and the Linux installation media. This video illustrates installing Linux on an 8246-L2C IBM Power Linux 7R2 server. You'll be following these steps. The video redisplays the list of steps along the way. To install the Power Linux server in a rack, see the information located in the Systems Hardware Information Center. When installed in a rack, the front of the server looks like this. The back of the server looks like this. Note the orange power supply shipping bracket, which you must remove before supplying power to the server. Connect the graphics monitor cable by plugging it into the graphics card in the back of the server. Connect the USB keyboard by plugging it into one of the two USB ports in the back of the server. Connect the USB mouse by plugging it into the other of the two USB ports in the back of the server. Connect the network cable from the network router with a DHCP server to the ETH0 port of the network interface card on the back of the server, which is typically the topmost port. When the Linux installer runs, it will automatically configure the server network settings with information obtained from the DHCP server. Verify that the power cables and supplies match the plug and voltage requirements of the server. If you have not already done so, remove the power supply shipping brackets. Install the power cables in the back of the server by first pushing in the power modules. Then, plug the cables into the power modules. Now it's time to power on the server. Locate the control panel in the front of the server. Left to right, it has a round white power button, three LEDs, a USB port, another LED, and a rectangular button that ejects the control panel from the body of the server. Wait for the power LED, which is the leftmost, to be flashing green. Press the round power button with an object that allows you to hold it in until the power LED is solid green which indicates the system is powering on. Press the eject button so that the control panel is no longer completely in the server body and pull it toward you until you can swivel it downward. Signs that the system is powering on include reference codes appearing on the control panel display and the sound of the cooling fans operating. Insert the Linux installation media into the DVD tray on the front of the server. If the tray eject button does not eject the tray, push a paper clip into the hole on the front of the tray to eject it manually. Now it's time to boot the installer for your Linux distribution. If prompted, press the appropriate key to select the monitor as the active console. On the language keyboard selection menu, select option 3 to continue booting. On the License Agreement menu, assuming you want to accept the printed license agreement provided with the server, select Option 1 to accept it. Type the password for the FSP admin account and press Enter. The default password depends on how you ordered your server. If you ordered your server preloaded, the admin password is password spelled P-A-S-S-W-0-R-D. If you ordered it without a preload, the admin password is admin, spelled A-D-M-I-N. Either way, the letters in the password are all lowercase. You are now in the System Management Services, or SMS, menus. On the SMS main menu, select option 5 to select boot options. On the multi-boot menu, select option 1 to select the boot device. On the select device type menu, select option 7 to list all devices. 
If you don't see the CD-ROM device in the list, press the N key to display the next page in the list. When you see the CD-ROM device in the list, type its corresponding device number and press Enter to select it. On the Select Task menu, select Option 2 to select a normal mode boot. Finally, select Option 1 to confirm that you want to exit SMS and boot the server. The server boots to the boot prompt for the installer of your Linux distribution. To boot the installer, type the word Linux for Red Hat or the word install for SUSE and press Enter. This video shows Red Hat. After a while, you are prompted to test the installation media or skip the test. This video skips that test. Next, you are presented with the first menu of the installer. Proceed to install Linux as usual. If you're installing Red Hat, you may encounter an issue where the installer requires more memory than the firmware has allocated to the installer. The memory issue appears in the form of the kernel failing to load and you're being presented with an open firmware prompt, which looks like a zero in a right angle bracket. If you see this, proceed as follows. Type print env real dash base and press enter to display the value of the real dash base open firmware environment variable value. The value is likely a two followed by six zeros. Change the value by typing set env space real dash base space the letter c followed by five zeros and pressing enter. Verify that the new value has been set by running the previous print env command again. Finally, type reset-all and press enter. This instructs open firmware to reboot the server, leading to the boot prompt for the installer. Once again, type the word Linux in lowercase and press enter to boot the installer and proceed to install Linux. We'd love to hear your feedback about this video. To get involved in the conversation, join the Power Linux community on IBM Developer Works. You can find a quick start document describing this process. You can find more information about Power Linux in the IBM Linux Information Center. You can find complete information about the 8246-L2C IBM Power Linux 7R2 server in the IBM Systems Hardware Information Center.